welcome to Gentle Yoga at 2 p.m. I'm Jeannie, and we're coming to you from the uh, ACC community room. Um, today's class, we're just revisiting uh, some of the things we did last week and just shoring up that muscle memory. And it's, um, you know, basically our hips, um, our balance, and just warming up the joints to begin with. So we'll start at the back of the mat here. If you uh, know there are certain props like a chair to help uh, keep balance or uh, blankets and uh, blocks, uh, have those nearby as usual. You'll have an opportunity to use them. And just arriving at the back of the mat, we're just slowing down our breath by just simply noticing how we feel. As we stand in mountain, you can think about the legs having a micro bend to the knees. You want to keep from locking out the knees. Just notice how the mat feels under the feet. Whatever brought you to class today, still working its way through the body. Start to cultivate a more relaxed, deeper connected breath. So let's go ahead and bring our left palm to rest on our chest. Right palm resting below the belly. And as you breathe through the next few breath cycles, just notice how the placement of the hands may move as the air enters the lungs through the nose and as it exits through the nose. Facil facilitate the inhales with that deepening, that imagining of energy entering the body, expanding through all points of the, the body. And then as you slowly release the breath, gently pressing in the belly hand, help to expel that air. And as the breath becomes a little longer, be more connected to the ujjayi breath, getting that deep sense of Inhale, pause, the exhale, the pause. Much like an ocean breath, an ocean wave. All right, let's go ahead and bring our breath and movement of the body together. Just bring the hands down to relax at our sides. Lift the toes, lift the heels if you need. Standing in our mountain, let's inhale. Start to draw the energy through the feet, up the legs, the back, to the crown of the head and beyond. And as you exhale, feel the energy returning. And as you become a little more rooted in your mountain, the legs lengthen, the back lengthens, palms face forward. With the next inhale, let's go ahead and start to move the center of gravity of the soles of the feet towards the toes. And as you get to that tipping point, hopefully at the end of that inhale, you can start to slowly breathe the center of gravity back towards the heels. And slowly explore that transition. As you get to the tipping point back, Go ahead and use the next breath to start moving forward once more to, toward the toes. And with the next few breaths, just get a good idea of the foundation from heel to toe. And then we'll meet back at the center. It should feel somewhere at the top of the ankles, near to the heels. Settling back into our mountain. Let's inhale to reset, nice and tall. Feeling that energy lifting up through the crown of the head. Let's exhale, roll the center of gravity at the soles of the feet towards the right edge of the feet. Inhale, 
all the way over to the other side. Find that edge. And then use the next few breath cycles, that two part breath cycle, just move from side to side, left to right at the soles of the feet, meeting back at center once more. Resetting mountain, inhaling, energizing upwards. Let's go ahead and start making small circles in one direction. Might be a little choppy, might be smooth circular movements that radiate outwards toward the edge of the feet. So you get an idea of the perimeter in this direction. Once that's identified, go ahead and bring in the circles so that you can return to the center like water going down a drain in mountain. Let's inhale once more, nice and tall, energized upwards. We're just going to move now in the opposite direction. Circular movement in this opposite direction might find a smoother, maybe a choppier experience. Just observe it. Once you've identified the perimeter of the feet, you can go ahead and tighten in the circles and return to center. Go ahead and lift the feet. You can always make these little transitions between the poses. If you have a tendency to grip the mat, lifting the feet before you move to the next pose is great. Let's go ahead and inhale nice and tall once more. Make sure your feet are about hip, hips distance apart too. We're going to start pivoting by these slow swirling, like swaying movements. Just pivoting at the shoulders, at the torso. And as we find more pivot uh, movement, movement, we want to lift the balls of the feet and pivot on the heel of that side of the foot. And as you can feel that movement from side to side, rolling from one side to the other, that the arms being nice and relaxed can kind of whip around you just gently and you're getting some movement in the ankles, the hips, not so much in the knees, but in the shoulders and in the torso, where the hip and torso meets. We'll go ahead and slow that down, coming back to peter out that momentum, finding ourselves back in mountain. Go ahead and reorient the feet underneath the hip bones, hips distance apart should be the feet and moving up the body. Let's go ahead and place our palms forward if they turned in for some reason. And inhaling nice and tall. We're going to bring the shoulders up towards the ceiling. And then on the exhale, slowly just roll them back and let them melt down. Get the tips of the shoulder blades to tuck into the mid back at the bottom of the exhale. We'll do a total of four of these sets. Each inhale and exhale set, getting the shoulders to lift up on the inhale, roll back and relax on the exhale. Just gives us an idea of how our shoulders are feeling this afternoon. Go ahead and stop after your four and we'll continue with another round. This time, lifting up, we're moving them forward on the exhale for the next four breath cycles. Use this round to get that nice forward exhale release of the shoulders. And then by the end of that, hopefully you get a little looser, more limber feeling in those shoulders. Go ahead, return to mountain. As we move up to the top, feel as if you've got a gentle tuck of the chin, just slight tucking so that there's a lengthening of the back of the neck. You're feeling as if there's a string pulling you up at the crown of the head, aligning the ear over the uh, shoulder, over the hip, over the knee, over the ankles, eventually. And so let's inhale nice and long, and exhale, just let the right 
earlobe dip toward the right shoulder. Keep the length in the left side of the neck. Inhaling for length. Exhaling to turn the gaze and release. Use the next few breath cycles to just find release on this side of your neck. Notice if you're rolling out at the soles of the feet towards the outer edges. See if you can find even distribution at the feet and a good solid column of support all through the body up to the shoulders so that all you have to do is use the breath, the ocean breath, to help you release through the left side of your neck. Maybe even the eyes can find respite at the right side of the vision. With that very last exhale, go ahead and inhale the eyes, the gaze, and the head, crown the head completely back up to center. Go ahead and exhale over to the other side using the breath to facilitate each movement. Exhales are great for releasing. Inhales, good for lengthening, finding the energy, imagining it releasing, circulating through all points of the body. And on the exhale, taking away all that isn't needed in the body, the tension, any toxins, After your fourth breath cycle, go ahead and roll the eyes, the gaze, and head all the way back up to center so that with the exhale, you can guide the gaze downward and rest the eyes somewhere at the top of the mat, nice long back of the neck, space between the chin and the chest. And imagine with every inhale, that lengthening gives a slight diagonal tilt right here at the top of the head, crown of the head reaching towards the ceiling with each inhale. And still releasing and relaxing with each exhale, using only those muscles needed to keep this upright position of mountain. With your very last exhale, go ahead and bring the belly in towards the spine we're going to inhale the eyes back to the center, past the center, towards the ceiling. And once you can see, oh, pretty much above you, go ahead and stop craning the neck and keep the throat nice and open in the front, some space to the back, and palms facing forward, shoulders sternly rotating back, elbows nice and heavy, arms heavy, relaxed at the sides. So all you need to do is focus on your opening through the throat, the mouth, perhaps even a lower jaw sway from the side to the other side. And then with that last inhale, we're going to exhale. Let the eyes guide you back to center. And then go ahead and shake out any residual activation in arms, shoulders, lifting one leg and then the other. We'll start our modified sun salutations in just a moment. Standing back in our mountain, energized fingers towards the floor, lengthening. And then we can inhale while we're still energized to lift up the hands above the head, engage the core, firm up the core, and hinge at the hips. Coming down with the straight back, and you can always walk the hands down. We're just giving ourselves five good deep breath cycles to let the back unfold. If you're stiff, if you've had a long night, and it's just a little stiffer than usual, give yourself a lot of time, deep, slow breaths to sort of release. You want to feel that stable center of gravity from the hips down to the heels so that the torso can start to release. You can start with the hands by just bringing them down. Maybe they don't touch the floor. That's okay. You can see if you're holding on to your head. Gently nod the head no, yes. See if it'll just dangle there like a plumb line with gravity helping its uh, the neck to gently stretch out. 
or natural traction, if you will, with the help of gravity. And deep breaths. If the backs of the legs are kind of, you know, sore and you need to deeply bend them, you can do that. Still try to keep the hips above the heels. And as we've probably gotten through our five breath cycles here, we're going to come out of this fold, our first ragdoll fold, with a slow curl up of the spine. Start with engaging the core, press into the feet, firm up the legs, slow inhale, starts to curl up the spine. You can walk the hands up if you need that extra support. And imagine as you come back up to mountain, Shoulders are opening, rotating back and down. And you're just allowing the blood to rush back to the head. We'll go ahead and fold once more. Energize the hands downward. Inhale, extend the arms above the head. Engage the core and hinge at the hips with the exhale. Come on down. Float down to a second fold, a little shorter this time. Maybe we can focus a little more on the legs this time. If you're feeling like you can straighten out maybe one leg and then the other to help lengthen and see if you can come into this fold with a little straighter leg, but keep the bend if it's still a work in progress. And once more, you can alternately bend one knee and then the other. You can hold on to your shins, tops of the feet, can even support the torso with the help of the forearms on the thighs. To come up out of this one, you have the choice of either a slow roll up or a straight back, but from our fold, we're going to inhale, engage the core, and you can choose. If you come up with a straight back, lengthen the arms, use the power of the inhale, come on up, exhaling hands, down heart center, into prayer. We'll start our walking meditation. Inhaling, lifting the right foot. Exhaling the right foot down. Heel, ball of foot, toes down. Inhale, left foot up. Exhale, the heel, ball of foot, and toes down. And as we slowly make our meditative way to the top of the mat, one full step per breath cycle. At the top of the mat, We'll meet in mountain. Looking down at the fingertips, press into the palms. Inhale, watch the palms rise. At the top, we'll separate the hands and hinge at the hips to fold. Exhale all the way. Engage the core. Inhale, we're going to half lift. Go ahead and lengthen from the tailbone down to the crown of the head. You can lengthen through the legs as well. You can press through the hands to help lengthen through the spine. Keep the vision, the gaze looking downward. And then exhale, return to the fold. That might just be you bending your elbows. And then we're going to place the hands next to the feet. Step a right foot back. You might need to take a couple steps. And then we're going to inhale, bring the shoulders over the wrists, and then bring the knees down, untuck the toes, and press into the tops of the uh, feet into the hands, extend through the arms. Give yourself good, strong, protracted shoulders. Shoulder blades are moving away from the spine. Arms are extending down into the mat. And there's a little bit of support at the shins, the tops of the feet. And we're bringing the belly button to the spine, engaging the core. Let's go ahead and inhale, tuck the toes, lift up the hips. Exhale, put the hips back to your first down dog. You may need to separate the feet a little more, hips distance apart. Heels may be lifted. They may be down at the mat. Your hands, they should have fingers splayed. Thumbs are inside. And feel where that support is in the palm of your hand. If you feel it more at the heels of the palms, See if you can spread out more of the support, the distribution of weight all the way through the palms, through the fingertips. And make sure your ears are somewhere headed in between the upper arms. Keeping our upside down V here, 
we're thinking about our energy moving upwards at the hips. So you can think about carving out your core, engaging the belly button so that it just sticks to your, your spine. As you press down into the extended arms and lower and lengthen through the backs of the legs, through the feet towards the mat. So your hands and your feet are moving downward in energy as your hips are lifted. You can always see where those arms are feeling at your ribs. Make them nice and long. With the next inhale, let's go ahead and roll the eyes towards the hands. We're gonna bend the knees if we need to and walk the hands all the way to our feet to the back of the mat. Fully exhale here. Let's inhale for a half lift. Press into wherever your hands make contact so you can lengthen through the back. Exhale back to the fold. Inhale, engage the core. Come on up, slow roll up or strong straight back. Exhaling hands down heart center. And we'll move to our second round. Inhale, right foot up. Exhale, right foot down. Inhale, left foot up. Exhale, left foot down. A focus that's nice and soft out to the distance. Engaging the core, pressing into palms to return to stability if you feel wobbly. At the top of the mat, let's look at the fingertips. Press into the palms. At the top, exhale, hinge at the hips and fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Bring the hands to the feet, to the mat. Step the feet back. Inhale, shoulders over the wrists. Long high plank this time. Three full breath cycles here. See if you can just press into the hands. Keep the heel to the head. One nice long hypotenuse. And stick the belly button to the spine. With the next inhale, let's lift up the hips. Exhale, press into the hands, arms to bring yourself to down dog. Make any adjustments between the feet, between the hands and the feet to make your upside down V. Take this opportunity for a shorter time in dog to just inhale to the tiptoes and exhale. Slowly lower the heels towards the mat. No matter where they land, Let's inhale, look to the hands, bend the knees if you need, and exhale, walk the hands to the feet, to the fold at the back of the mat. Fully exhale, inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, engage the core, come on up. Exhaling hands, down heart center, and down to the sides. Give ourselves another breath or two. And then we're going to meet in our tabletop position. So just coming down um, to your knees on the mat, you may need that folded blanket. I have a nice thick rug underneath here. Maybe you do at home as well. But um, if you know you like that extra cushion, keeping our tabletop position here, we're just hopefully Bringing the shoulders over the wrists and the hips over the knees. We want a basic tabletop position of a neutral spine. So here, keeping the tops of the feet down on the mat. And if you feel your knees are still kind of sensitive, you can always move more of the shin to support the weight of the body. So go ahead and um, bring more of the blanket, perhaps a folded blanket underneath the shins. And then as you're in your uh, tabletop here, we're going to be uh, extending through the right leg out back behind us. So prepare to balance on your two hands and your left shin uh, situation here. We're going to go ahead and inhale, start to tuck the toes and extend through that right leg. You could shift the position of the toes, the ball of the foot so that you can lengthen. Now remember as we're here, we're just trying to lengthen but if it's too much, you can keep the bend to that right knee. You want to keep the sacrum, the back, 
everything in this neutral tabletop position and just extend through that back leg if you can. Let's go ahead and bring the shin back down. You can readjust your tabletop once more. Go ahead and release some pressure from the wrist by bringing the hips down towards the heels and then come back up to your tabletop. With the next inhale, go ahead and prepare to shift the balance to the other appendages as you extend through the left leg. Find that balance. See if you can bring that extension from the heel all the way to the hip. Notice if you're putting any more weight in any of those three points, maybe even the toes count as a fourth point, that, uh, your left toes. But see if your uh, support is off balance at all and the hands are in that right shin area. So if you can give an even distribution, then let's go ahead and bring that left shin down. Well, once more, bringing the shins closer to each other, bring the hips back down. Now, if you have that block and you need the support, go ahead and bring that support between you and the hips, the hips and the heels, or you could just hopefully have gravity help you eventually bring that distance closer. But wherever you are, as we're coming into a counter stretch from that tabletop, we're just going to fold comfortably into this closed kneed child's pose. So your head doesn't need to touch anything, your chest doesn't need to be supported. We're just giving ourselves a brief child, uh, child's pose counter stretch, a reset. Let's go ahead and come back up. We're going to walk the hands up so we can lift up the hips. Coming back up to the tabletop, we're just giving ourselves a little bit of space between the knees in case they were touching, and we're just going to space out the heels. We're moving into our fixed fern. If you need a block, put it in that strategic location and start to walk the hips back. You want an internal rotation of the thighs so that you have a sort of like a pizza slice shape. The hips are resting in between the heels. The toes are pointed either back behind you or at an angle. And you're bringing the knees either to to touch, or if that's too much for you, there can be a little bit of space, maybe half an inch. But if it's too much to sit up, you're always okay to keep the hands at the front here with the torso sort of folded over. But we're breathing here for just a short more, uh, one more breath cycle. And then we'll go ahead and lift up, walking the hands in front, removing any props. We're going to bring the feet back together. We're going to just bring the hips and the heels to touch or with that prop there. We'll walk one more time, the hands up so we can lift the hip, hips. And we're going to tuck the toes. Make some space between the feet and the knees so that they're right underneath the hips again. And we're going to slowly start to bring the toe tuck in. Now, if you're able to come upright, give yourself a walk up into an upright position. If this is a good enough position for you here, stay here. And you're always welcome to come out of the toe tuck when it's uh, right for you. Just a couple of breaths in. Okay, and then we're going to release the toe tucks and give yourself a tap of the tops of the feet. Then we'll bring the knee position back and come on down to the belly, one forearm at a time. And as we're on the belly for the first time, it feels so good to do this. Just give yourself a few breaths just here enjoying the flatness, the support of our hips on the floor. You can rest your brow on pillowed hands. You can have the um, elbows above the shoulders if that's not too taxing for you. But if that's not comfortable, you can bring the shoulders down more. You can rest the brow line. Your nose will be smushed a little bit, but if you want, you can also turn your face if you would rather not smush 
the nose or have the front brow supported. Just give yourself a few breaths here. And then we're going to press into our chest, lift the head slightly. If it's turned to the one side, you'll just turn it to the other and then relax there. Just a brief counter stretch. Notice if your shoulder is lifted, see if that can just be uh, encouraged to relax. And then we're going to press into our chest once more, center the face, walk the fingertips up so we can come into our sphinx position. So just notice where the elbows are. We're hoping they'll be underneath the shoulders and you're hopefully using more of the uh, forearm and palms to support the upper body. Make sure your shoulder blades are not caving into the spine, but actually activated so that they're protracted. They're just supporting your shoulders without caving inward towards the spine. And that'll give you enough support in the upper bodies. Notice if the palms are tenting, see if you can relax them. And with the legs, we're going to tiptoe, uh, come up to the tips of the toes. You'll have a flexed foot. And keep them about as long as you can. You might just casually lift up the knee, lengthen through the leg, and then rest the knee. Don't want to fold the kneecap or feel any type of uncomfortable feeling around the knee. Make sure you're nice and supported there. And then we can go ahead and untuck the toes and relax. See if anything changed in the upper body. We just want to use those muscles needed to keep the torso upright without being too aggressive in the activation of the muscles. Try to relax everything from the hips down. If you have any activated uh, toes, glutes, quads, just see if you can release. And then for the next three breath cycles, just focus on the ocean breath. With the inhale, that lengthening, that energy intake. And with the slow, controlled exhale, the release. You may find that with each rolling breath, the skin at the top of the belly is moving. your last breath cycle here. Let's go ahead and slowly lower the chest. Allow the elbows to move out as the chest lowers and pivot the palms down so you can rest your brow on the backs of your hands. Now we're going to go ahead and bring the hands down to our sides, palms up, lengthen, Give yourself a little bit of space here to rest the chin and the nose. And then move the palm down. Palms are down, touching the mat. We're going to lengthen through the left leg. You can come up to the tips of your toes and then lengthen and then release. Try to point through that left foot and then let the foot land if it started to lift. Relax that left foot. Let's go ahead and come up on the right toe, flexing the right foot, lift up the right knee and lengthen through the right leg and then let that leg relax, returning the top of the foot to the mat. Point the right foot, lengthen through the right leg, engage the entire leg, lengthen and then relax. We're going to turn the head to one side Allow the, that cheek to rest for a breath. Inhale, press into the chest. Turn the gaze to the other side. Rest on that cheek for one breath. Pressing into the cheek, uh, chest once more. Bring the face back to the mat. A gentle support here at the chin and, and nose tip. And now we're going to lengthen through both legs. You may find the feet lift. You may not have the feet lift, but lengthen through the legs. See if you can get that length from the hip all the way down as one unit to the toes. 
And as they're pointing down, you're feeling that energy. The quads are engaged, the calves, the toes are pointed, and then release. Take one more deep breath. Point the legs. See if you can press into your pubis, your chest, your belly, and lift the feet while it's still lengthening as one unit. And then release both legs. Let everything relax. We're going to turn the head to one side, resting more of that area away from the cheek, in between the cheek and the ear. Make sure your neck is in alignment with your spine, though. Don't want to curve out the neck to one side. See if you can release any activated muscles in the hands, in the back, in the legs. One more deep breath. Pressing into the chest. Turn the gaze to the other side. See if you can have more of that space between your left ear and that cheek, or that ear and that cheek. Rest on this side, making sure the neck is in alignment with the spine, not curved to this side that we're faced to. You just want to relax. See if you can release through the shoulders, through the hips, through the tops of the feet. All right, and then we'll press through the chest once more. We're going to find our way onto the belly. You can bring your hands up. You can extend through the one side and roll over. You can do a reverse push-up. Do what feels good to you. We're going to meet in a base bridge position. And keep those blocks at either side of your hip. Trying to do a better job of remembering to keep the placement of these blocks. But as we're here, we're definitely moving into our windshield wipe and a figure four with the bridge, deep windshield wipe, hold. So having these blocks in on certain settings, they might be on the lowest of settings, maybe a medium setting, maybe the highest setting, but somewhere about here. So as we turn into our windshield wipes or our uh, twists, We'll get some support if we need that. So in, pull this down. In our base bridge position, we want to make sure there's a lot of space in that shoulder blade area, no folded skin, so you can always bring the elbows up above the chest. Having the neck in alignment with the spine, the sacrum is nice and flat. There's not a rolling to one side or the other and the feet are nice and flat as well. We're not rolling to the sides of our uh, edges of our feet. And as we come up in to our very first bridge, we're going to extend the arms out to our sides. The hands are about, oh, six inches, a few inches, half a foot away from our hips. We're going to press into the, our, our arms, our shoulders, start to press into the feet to help peel up the hips. Now you can get higher with the hips by engaging the glutes, engaging the quads, the hamstrings. You can find how high you can go up, but with your first one, just be happy with the first height that you reach. Then we're holding it for just a couple of breath cycles here. And then on the exhale, we're going to slowly, from this point where our back is, slowly bring down the spine one vertebra at a time until the sacrum is down and the hips are safely landed. Go ahead and roll to the sides of the feet. Doesn't matter which side, just go to one side slowly. Don't move the position of the feet, just roll on the sole of the feet to the edge. Go ahead and inhale, knees come back up, sacrum flat on the mat. And we're just going to do a slow windshield wipe to the other side. It's very slow motion right now. And then we can inhale, knees come all the way back up. And we'll come into another bridge. And this time, holding the arms out, keep a uh, block nearby. You might be able to slip a, a block underneath your bridge and have it supported for a bit if you would like to do that. So in the second uh, round of bridge, we're pressing our arms flat 
at an inverted V position to the body. Inhaling slowly, pressing into the arms, shoulders, lifting up the hips only as we're pressing into the feet so we can lift up the hips. And if we find we can go a little higher, we might squinch in, is that a word? We might bring in the shoulder blades towards the spine, squinch them in towards the spine to give us a little more support at the upper shoulders to help lift the chest as we're helping to press into the feet engaging the glutes. You might have your strategically placed block so that you can place the tailbone or some part of that lower edge of the sacrum to be supported, or you can just keep that support by yourself. But we're holding there for about one more breath cycle. And on an exhale, we're going to slowly bring the spine down, moving the shoulder blades away from the spine as we get closer, as the hips get closer, and then finally land. And then the sacrum and everything is just going to be supported. We'll go ahead and windshield wipe once more. You can do a long hold with the windshield wipe on either side. Inhaling to bring the knees back to center. Exhaling to roll to the other side. Inhaling to come back to center one more time. And now here, we'll just inhale to extend the left leg and give yourself a nice extension of the left leg and some ankle rolls. Hopefully that space at the lower back, the lumbar, area is nice and flat and pressed into the mat to help stabilize the leg and the body as you're in these small movements you can keep a bend in the knee if you need and just give your toes a nice wave-like movement with the big toe in the opposite direction maybe the other toes can feel a nice stretch too and again you can roll the ankles in one direction and roll them in the opposite direction. Let's go ahead and bring that left foot back to land in our bridge position. And we'll go ahead and extend through the right leg. You can extend with a completely straight leg or with a bend to the knee. And just give yourself some time with the leg up. Folding at the knee just a little bit if you feel a little stiffness still a little tension in the backs of your legs and again ankle rolls in one direction a few times and then in the opposite direction to balance things out can go ahead and allow that right foot to land and let's check the time Moving right along. We'll go ahead and prepare. Make sure your bridge is in a good alignment for the spine and the neck and the position of the feet, hips distance apart, flat soles of the feet supported on the mat. We're going to inhale, lift up your left foot and externally rotate the left hip, finding that landing of the left ankle on that lower thigh area. Now here, you might find a stiffer left hip, so give yourself some time to open up. Usually about three breath cycles, three to five breath cycles to help us find that sweet spot. We're opening up, we're exploring a position that maybe we haven't seen for a while, either to stay or in a long time. So always, especially in new movements, Move slowly to see where your body is at this moment. So if your knee is not moving in towards the chest, if it's not winging inward, you're in a pretty good open position with this left hip. Then what we'll do is position our blocks. We'll be keeping a windshield wipe uh, in this figure four for a good five breath cycles. So. From here, 
we're going to strategically place these blocks. You may need it. If you know you don't windshield wipe pretty far, keep it on the highest setting. But you can play with that setting of the block. Now, just to roll over, we're going to go to that side. Um, I've got my left foot, so we're going to roll to the right. If you've got the opposite position, just take that in mind. But inhale, start to roll over. Exhale is when you start to really release to the other side. So you might feel really good with the shoulders still on the mat or with the left shoulder peeling up slightly as well. You can always control how much of a twist you have by the placement of your arms as well. And if you have your block and you found that landing that speaks to you, then from that point, you will be breathing about five breath cycles. If you can last for 10, that's great. But we want to keep nice, slow, comfortable, steady breaths. If you're breathing um, shallow breaths, if it's hard for you, you're craning your neck, if it's hard to keep the position, you've gone too far, and you can always come out, go with less intensity, or just rest in a more uh, comfortable position until we're done. Join us when you're ready. But here we can focus on this great release at our uh, that point, right? That soft, fleshy point where the traverse um, obliques, where all these ab muscles are. These systems, collections of uh, muscles that enable our torso to twist, to fold, to lean back, to, you know, uh, make pressure and support. It's one of our oldest muscles, the psoas, to help uh, stabilize the lower and the upper regions of your body. That hopefully is giving a nice, is getting a nice stretch right now. And as we've been on the side for a while to come out, you can guide your roll back to center by bringing the left thigh with the help of your hands back to center, getting them back onto the mat. We'll go ahead and lift up slightly this right ankle, this left ankle, and internally rotate, help to guide this left hip back into the base bridge position especially if uh, your hips are you know, really fragile at this time. Slow movements. So making sure our um, locks are out of the way right now, we can give ourselves one more just gentle massage, but higher up on the glutes you'll feel by simply allowing one knee to kind of follow the other knee. You'll get a nice glute massage, and at the same time release any activated muscles, hopefully. And then we'll go ahead and start placing the blocks again near our, our hip area so we can return to our figure four on the other side. So inhaling, we're lifting the right foot. And again, stabilize this as you need. Externally rotate that right hip as you find that landing of the right ankle on the left lower thigh. Notice how that feels in your sacrum, in your hips. See how that plays out. Did your right knee wing inward a little more? Is it just fine? See how your hips are feeling. Again, it takes about three breath cycles, sometimes five, as you're transitioning from pose, even within the pose, from just side to side. Okay, if you find that that's a good spot for you, Go ahead and place our position, uh, the blocks. Go ahead and give ourselves one inhale and slowly start to roll to the other side. And again, if you like gravity to help you release, probably going to be hanging out there without a block. But if you do like that support, find hopefully that landing. Even 
giving ourselves the three to five breaths. If something uh, became misaligned or just is not comfortable, always move out, come back in with the corrections. And from that point, you're finding your five to 10 breath cycles. Reconnect to the Ujjayi breath. See if the ebb and flow of your breath is like the ocean. As you reach your very last couple of breath cycles, prepare to come out. You may need to get a hold of your right thigh or the thigh that's twisted and help guide it back to center. As your sacrum, your shoulders, as you return to the center of the mat, to your base bridge position, with this figure four, I'm just going to allow everything to come back to center. And then we're going to internally rotate the right hip just slightly before we lift up this right heel. We're extending as we internally rotate so that we can bring this right foot down to the mat. And give yourself again a little higher up windshield wipe so that the top of your glutes the higher part of the sacrum gets a little bit of a massage. And we'll be moving into our Shavasana. So as you move into laying flat on your back, extend through the legs. You can tap out the knees if you need. You can have your legs directly underneath the hips, or you can widen the distance between the feet and kind of have your feet pointed towards the um, corners of the mat. Whatever feels good to you at this point. Figure that out, move in small movements. And as you're resting, you might need to have a block underneath the knees. If you have that lower uh, compression, if you have that compression at the lower back, you might need a blanket over you if you're a little bit on the cold side. But go ahead and relax. Palms are faced up, arms extended to the side. I'll be sitting upright to mind the time. And in about five minutes when your Shavasana is done, you'll hear the three bells to awaken. There's a question. Yes. Can you please show some seated yoga stretches and exercise for the feet and ankles when you have that chance? Oh, absolutely. Stretching for seated feet, hands. All right. We'll do that when we wake up.
bring the mind and the body together again. Notice the breath. Notice each rise and fall of the chest. Notice the sounds in the room. And become aware of the hands, the feet, the legs, the belly, the chest, and the head. As you return the body vessel and the spirit once more, go ahead and make any movements with the fingers, toes. We'll be meeting in an upright seated position. We have a special request of uh, seated stretches with the hands and the feet. So we can incorporate that with our breath exercise today. And as you sit upright, I invite you to sit with a staff position. So you have an idea of how to keep the fingers and the feet kind of in this relational positioning as we're moving through our, um, our exercise, our breath exercise. We'll be using our prayer hands so bringing the hands and the palms out to the side of the hips, palm side up. We'll go ahead and inhale, extend through the sides and have the palms meet up. If they can touch, that's great. But if they can't, that's, that's all right. Just keep them up here. We're going to inhale, reach up, splay the fingers, splay the toes, and then exhale, let the hands come down heart center. Go ahead and keep them here at the center. And we're going to place the palms together, pressing gently. Watch the fingertips rise once more. And up above the head, whether directly above or somewhere out in front of you, go ahead and interlace the fingers. We're going to reverse the palms and stretch out as much as you can. So thumbs pointing downward. We're going to point the toes stretch out through the palms. Inhale, flex the feet, invert the palms towards you, and extend with the knuckles leading. So the shoulders are getting a nice stretch, and the, you're pressing out through the heels, inhaling and exhaling here. Let's go ahead and inhale. Point the toes, press out through the palms. Inhale one more time, flex the feet, let them relax. Raise the hands as far as you can and then start to release through the fingers. Bring the hands out to the sides and have them touch behind your sacrum, lay on the flats of your, the backs of your hands. And if you can interlace your fingers behind you at the sacrum, that's great. If you can just cup them, that's fine too. But open up the shoulders and breathe here. We're going to extend uh, let the toes roll away, inhaling, exhale, come back to center, bring the hands to rest. Hands to the heart once more, inhale, press up, exhale, separate the palms if they're not already, and grab a hold of the elbows. Inhale, press out through the heels. Lift up through the chest and see if you can pull apart the elbows. It's like you're pulling in this direction, just getting that nice stretch. And then release, bring the elbows down, rest the back of the hands behind your hips and lengthen through the neck, gentle tuck of the chin and let the toes come in. We'll go ahead and bring in one more hands to heart center. Thank you so much for coming to class. I hope you have a wonderful day. Namaste.